Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I'm so excited to be with you today. We are here in Denver in Big Up Studios, and we have a Colorado company in the house, majority female owned. Ashley Blankenship, welcome yeah. to Turmeric and Tequila. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely, I'm really excited to unpack uh, your journey and your how you kind of said yes to opportunity kind of throughout your life. But we're gonna unpack uh, Red Rocks Vodka, which is a locally owned, majority woman owned vodka company here in Colorado. And before we jump in, I wanna read, I love the personality they have on their website and all the social media, but how um, I, how much I feel like you put yourself into the brand and the branding, I think this is a really special Thank message. you so much, that means a lot. Yeah, because we try hard to do that. Cause it, it's, it's literally just my husband and I right now. So we are growing this baby and you know trying to put ourselves completely into it. So I, you, I really appreciate that. Absolutely. You can really see it through when I was digging through the social media. I'm like, these guys really put their personality into what it is. So I just want to read this little message just so you have a flavor of what we're talking about. They say, what we believe, Colorado is special. Cocktails should be simple. Friends and family come first. We're proud to say we're minority woman owned. We love to have a good time and want to share the joy of responsibly imbibing a deliciously crafted cocktail with friends, both old and new. Please always drink responsibly. So yeah. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. Do you feel like that's like your core values put on display? Yep. I think 100%. so too. Yeah. Yes. And if you listen to Turmeric and Tequila, you know we always have our mission-driven, successful business humans on the mic, but we unpack the human behind the business before we even get to the business. So Ashley, you have a really eclectic background <laughs> from doula, recording artist, stay-at-home mom, now business owner. Yeah. Why don't you give us a little bit of flavor of like young Ashley, um, yeah. which Ooh. you had going on growing up? Well, I grew up, uh, my childhood was pretty normal, you know, just had like a middle class upbringing. And then um, the only difference was I knew how to sing really well. So I started okay. singing professionally when I was five. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I grew up being a performer. And um, when I was around 12, I was signed to Atlantic Records. No way. Yeah. Wait, were you born and raised in Colorado? In California. Oh, well, that's yeah. a nice spot to be if you're music. Yeah, inclined. it worked out well. Um, and... Right around that time, my mom actually, uh, unfortunately, became addicted to meth. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I was going through, you know, the recording industry and right at a time where you're transitioning into adulthood and, you know, trying to figure out who you are and at the same time having people come at you with all these different expectations and um, judgments. Uh, so it was really tough. And so I stayed in the music industry until I was probably around... 18 or 19 professionally. Okay. And then I thought, you know what? I'm really unhappy. I don't want to do this anymore. And this hurts. And so I um, I got married. My husband, we're still together today. He's a wonderful, wonderful man. Um, and he has allowed me to kind of try to find myself because honestly, it's taken me a while. Yeah. It's It hasn't been like a straightforward answer. I think because when I was going through those formative years, I was really told what I was supposed to be a lot. Mm. And so it's been a struggle to find out who I really am. And so um, I became like a realtor for a while. And then um, I ended up uh, getting pregnant. And my daughter was born at 26 weeks. Oh, so wow. she okay. was a, a super preemie. And after that, I was like, I don't want to ever leave her again. Like, yeah. I want to stay with her. And so I decided to be a stay-at-home mom. And so I was a stay-at-home mom for a long time. We have three beautiful children. And then they started going to school and I was like, you know, they're at school a lot. I have a lot of downtime right now. I don't want to just sit here and clean my house all the time. It's clean enough. Like I'm over it. <laughs> and so uh, I decided to be a doula because I was always fascinated. I had really terrible births. And so I was really fascinated with uh, creating an environment that felt safe for other women and that felt comfortable. And um, so they could have a beautiful experience like I didn't get to have. And um, so I became a, a doula, a childbirth educator, and a breastfeeding counselor. And I was doing that for a while. And in the meantime, behind the scenes, my husband was um, facing a lot of mental health issues. And he's comfortable with me sharing that so I can, I can talk openly about it. But um, so with his job, he was an air traffic controller. With his job, he, 
you you can't take antidepressants and be an air traffic controller. They don't oh, they don't allow it. So he was medically disqualified. And if you don't get off your antidepressants and go through all these like loopholes and jump through all these hoops and stuff like that, then you can't work. And so he was facing a medical retirement. Wow. And being a doula was so rewarding. I loved it. It was a really big passion. It still is. Um, but it didn't bring in a lot of money. And Really? I, uh, yeah. Oh, it was. Okay. Um, and, you know, that could be because I am really good at the behind the scenes stuff. I'm really good at, you know, doing the work, the paperwork, learning, researching, and doing all of that, comforting people. I'm really good at that kind of stuff. But as far as like sales and like going out and like yeah. finding people, I'm not the best at that, honestly. My husband is. That's why when we partnered up with Red Rock Spirits, it was a really, really good match for us. And we've been able to grow really, really quickly. And we're, um, we're excited about where we're headed. But, um, but so, yeah, there wasn't a lot of money in being a doula and the hours it takes, it's like it equals to, you know, not much, maybe minimum okay. wage because, you know, births are long and you're there the whole yeah. time. So, um, but it was wonderful. But we were, I was like, well, what are we going to do now? Because he was our main breadwinner. So he, yeah. uh, he happened to find this spirits company for sale. It was Red Rocks Vodka and they didn't really have a lot of sales. It was... Um, you know, really, really new. It, it needed a completely new bottle and everything like that. And we were like, let's do it. Like, why not? <laughs> where do you even find, where do you find a business like that for sale? Like, is it on it Craigslist like, or like No, it's like some, like a, a website where they sell businesses. Like oh, people okay. Are it's a businesses. thing. Yeah, okay. it's like a thing. I should probably know about I, this. I, I didn't know about it. <laughs> and he was like, hey, this would be really cool. And I was like, I don't know. But you know what? It was just like I said yes, and I to this day I can't say why I said yes because it was so far out of my comfort zone. Yeah. I don't know a lot about the business. There's so many rules and laws and regulations when you're selling alcohol. Like it was a big undertaking, and yeah. it was you know a big risk that we took, but we jumped in, and here we are. So that's crazy. <laughs> well, so I mean, I went back. It's so funny because I, I, I just like rattled like, off my no, whole life that, story. That was, that was relatively concise for like you just packed in all the decades right there in like five minutes um but the running theme is really resilience and even as a young person i mean it's funny like i, I always ask about the human behind the business because there's always patterns of behavior early on that end up being like your purpose or your path later on we just you know yeah. the middle age or like high school middle school you know college whatever like we kind of lose who we are because yeah. it takes us all for i mean i'm still figuring it out like we're still finding Thank out what, what the Thank path you. is yeah yeah because there's no end game. But, you know, early on, being in that environment in California, and this is, um, was that like early 90s? It was like late 90s, early 2000s. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is like, this is before Me Too. This is before like oh, some yeah. of these industries have oh, been disrupted. Yes. It was definitely before all of that. So you are a young human in these yeah. really like tough environments. And then I've had addiction in my family. Okay. Dealing with that is, I mean, it's a, you're not, you have no skill set to know how to help someone that yeah. can't be helped essentially. Yeah, you're completely helpless. Yeah. So I, I think early on you had a lot of deep adverse challenges, but it sounded like, you know, if you're taking on a business, well, okay. Like, how hard can it be? <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, for all that's the things like, you that's did. That's actually a good way to think about it. Yeah, because yeah, you had to overcome this stuff as a young human. And again, yeah. that time frame, like, we forget it's, thankfully, I always had sports. I think a piece of me always wanted to be in, like, music or TV or something. But I had, I wasn't a singer. I wasn't an okay. actress. So, like, yeah. here we are on podcasting. <laughs> um, but I think I was kind of protected from that because I don't, I don't know that I could have handled that back then yeah. in some way or form, where I think you could and you did. I mean, I don't know if I handled it well, but, you know, you are just – people are really resilient. And yeah. we don't know how resilient we are until we're put into something difficult and see how we can get out of it. Yeah, yeah. That's – I mean – Yes, you got to kind of just go through the storm yeah. and figure it out. Do you feel like some of those life skills early on helped you be like a better mom, a better partner? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. As I've gotten older, you know, you go through times and phases of your life where you're angry that things happened to you or that you had to go through certain things. But the more I live, the more I realize that all of those experiences have really prepared me for what was to come. Mm -hmm. And I feel like so much more prepared than even some other people who didn't experience those tough things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, when did you guys find yourself in Colorado? 
We have been here for about four years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are part of the, the California crew that came out here and just started to take over? Yeah. But I want to say like we were maybe like earlier, like we were like okay. the pioneers. We didn't, uh, we didn't know anybody moving out here except um, my sister did move here and, and she was like, it's awesome. Like you got, you're going to love is. it. It's, you're going to, you have to move here. And I was like, I don't know. Like we're kind of comfortable where we are. And I, I came to visit and I was like, okay, yeah, I got to get out here somehow. So Colorado's, we need to move. It, it's hard to be. It's beat. amazing. It's, yeah. It's, my, it's wonderful. My dad's family is California. Okay. Um, so we spent a good amount of time out there. And I, I, I'm i a city kid at heart. Like, born and raised Colorado, but went to school right outside of D.C. at um, George Mason University. Shout out. To play <laughs> lacrosse because there was nothing oh, competitive nice. back in the day. That's yeah. awesome. It was. Um, And I, I love the city, the vibe, the culture, the food, the diverse. Like, all of that buzz was mm-hmm. good. But when I came back, I'm like, damn, our weather's really a lot better. It's perfect. <laughs> It's so yeah. good. And we have, you know, amphitheaters and Red Rocks and we're starting to get, you know, more culture and different yeah, foods and stuff. There's, so there's everything here. I love it. Well, I mean, so establishing a, a business and a brand, you know, I can't even understand all the rules and logistics that go with distribution and the laws and like things you can and can't do within the industry. And you're newer to the area. What was like your step one? Once you guys had the business, and this is great for anyone thinking about making a move, whether you're young or you're older or later in your career and you're thinking about taking on something you've never done before. What was your step one into like, okay, we've made this decision. What is the first thing we're gonna do to kick this brand off? The first thing I did was learn yeah, because I had to know leg- legally what I was allowed to do and not allowed to do. I had to learn how to get into the stores, get into the restaurants, get into the bars. And I just ate up education. Like that's all I did day and night. I would research, read, listen to podcasts, like watch videos on YouTube, like just whatever information I could get, I would just eat it up. Yeah. And I think, you know, my my role as a doula helped me with that because that's a ton of research. You know, you're looking at, you know, studies and all this kind of stuff to make sure you're doing the right thing for your clients. And so um, that was it kind of just felt natural to to research that way. And I think that helped out a lot. Absolutely. I think listening is always like the first thing you can do when you're getting into stuff. Uh, And then the flip side is relationships, like being newer to the area, like four years isn't that long. You got to know like bars and industry people. How did you navigate making some of these key relationships right away? Well, I said my husband is a great salesman. He's he's really the one that's been been driving the force there because I'm pretty introverted. Like I I like talking one on one to people and I like building relationships and getting to know people. But um, you know, walking into a space where you're trying to sell yourself and show everyone what you got. Like, I just don't like to. <laughs> that's probably why I didn't um, continue on in the music industry because, like, that's just not who I am. Yeah. And so he's awesome at it. He um, he just can can just be friends with anybody immediately, and he's just one of those kind of people. And it's it's been going really well so far. I love it. Well, so I, I crossed paths with him at an event here in Colorado. And this summer, I was training last summer. So this summer, I'm like, I'm hitting all the fests and the things. Awesome. Like, I've been out of it. And I'm, I like, like, people and energy. Yeah. But then on the flip side, like, the turmeric and tequila, like, I love social. And then I'm like, we need a few days yeah. to, like, hibernate. Um, but when I was talking to your husband, Willis, I'm like, wait, Red Rocks vodka, this is the thing. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, have a sip. This is this. And I'm like, okay, like, just such good energy, good vibe. And yeah. you can, again, feel the personality within what you guys do. Like, intentional, serious, but also very personalized to where it comes from. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I was at least three or four drinks deep at this point. So if I could read awesome. it in, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But I was like, all right, give me your card. I'm going to follow up. Do you have people like that come to you guys a lot being like, I have a podcast or this and this? Like, do people say stuff like that a lot? Am I the only um, random out there? <laughs> we get it sometimes. Okay. But uh, I think most of the time it's like, oh, I know somebody who owns a restaurant or I know somebody who owns a bar. So it's been cool to have people come up to us and kind of want to help us out in our journey yes. and um, join us in our adventure of creating this thing. And it's been really, really cool. That's an, I think everything is energy. So like I'm always a long time entrepreneur. I'm big on like, right, what's the plan? What are the goals? Display your core values. And like just having good vibes because like there's so much you can't plan and control. Like yeah. you've got to just hope and like energetically believe that the right things are going to come in at the right time. I totally 100% agree with you on that. Are you big on like faith or energy or anything mm-hmm. like that, both? Yeah. Okay. Did you grow up a specific faith? Um, Not really. I became Christian as I got older, but okay. um, we were we didn't really practice anything growing up. Yeah, just singing. 
Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Like, girl, mean? get to work. Yeah, that seriously. was like my religion. Yeah. <laughs> That's how sports was for us. Like, okay. what did you do on Sundays? I'm like, go to football games yeah. or I had a game or like that's what we religiously did yeah that makes um, sense yeah so wait when did like energy and like more conscious living and mindset uh, kind of take a play into your life I always had even as a kid like I remember like feeling things that um, make me sound crazy but like <laughs> oh, no we're here for I the mean... intuitive energy we're here for all the things <laughs> okay, like cool. to tequila yeah okay cool because I always felt something you know and I couldn't really explain it to everybody and when I would say it people would look at me like what are you talking about but I always just like felt different things and like I had kind of this like intuition of um what was going to happen like I could kind of um not I don't want to say predict the future but like I had feelings that led me to do certain things that ended up working out oh a hundred yeah that's amazing do you have any of that like in your family have you ever talked to like grandmother yeah yeah yeah, I think my I have like an aunt a couple ants who kind of have that same thing or they'll have like dreams and then the yeah. dreams will come true and they can like interpret stuff like things like that oh do you do like <laughs> do you get like your cards read or anything i don't know okay i've done i'm i love all those things okay um and uh tibetan imports shout out to them off six they do like your birth sign your birth chart oh cool. so it's like your the day you're born um the time and the place okay. and i go like every few years and it's funny I'll, you record it and i listen to it like a year later and i'm like oh my god like it this was, was like kind of on right on time wow. exactly what they said yeah so i mean my cool. thing is like whether you believe it or not i kind of think traditional faith universe energy like it's all however you label it it's yeah. all kind of the same you're just listening to something that's pulling you in a certain way yeah and i think the older we get you're like well it worked out last time so i'm gonna lean in right yeah it's <laughs> like okay that worked out <laughs> Let's do that. Did you have like dreams of vodka bottles? <laughs> like, no, but my husband did. Seriously? Yeah, he had. Um, one day we were sitting at the table because we are like, it's just us, like I said, and we're just we work, we do all of it, we we label the bottles ourselves. So we're sitting at the the dining room table, and he's sitting there labeling bottles, and he stops and he looks up and he's like, "I had a dream about this." Oh my god! Years ago, like a deja vu. Yeah, yes. and he gets those all the time, and he's like, "Oh, I had a." I, I had a dream that we were like labeling vodka bottles. And at the time I was like, what the heck? Why am I labeling vodka bottles? So, so he has things like that all the time too. That's crazy. Yeah. So do you guys think you're kind of like energetically aligned as well? Uh, sometimes, maybe sometimes we're <laughs> energetically not aligned. Said but... every married couple. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, for the most part, you guys for sound... For the most part, we, we get along really well. You sound like a good, like, turmeric and tequila of, like, yeah. extrovert, do, do the thing. We do balance each other out really well. Introvert, yeah. yeah. And then meet somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Wh- who are the kids like? Um, I have three kids. And my daughter is the oldest, and she's a lot like me. Okay. She's very responsible, very kind of quiet, but, you know, likes to interact with people. And um, then my middle son, he is a lot like a mix between my husband and I. Okay. And my youngest is out of control and (laughs) (laughs) super smart, super cute, super funny, and just super bad. And I just <laughs> is it a boy or girl? It's a boy. Okay. And he, um and he's a lot like probably my husband. <laughs> okay. okay. At least you guys. That's funny. You guys each got one and then a half yeah. of the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Well, the older I'm, the oldest. So the oldest okay. is always like the kid that has to have it together. Yeah. Like it just is what it is. Yeah. Middle's like floundering, and then baby is just out here wilding all yeah. the time. That's just wilding out. All yeah. The time. Yeah. Dude, he'll probably be your number one uh, consumer once he's 21. Oh. <laughs> probably responsibly I do, though i do worry about that it's like okay they're coming up to teenage years and we got a lot of vodka lying around <laughs> yeah well i well this is actually a perfect segue because as entrepreneurs you're talking about this where we got on the mic we're doing everything like i'm oh, yeah. almost over 20 years as an entrepreneur and i think eight years for ko alliance my consulting company That's and it's awesome. thank you it, it is and you're you're never off. Like never. people think entrepreneurship is like, oh, you make your own hours, you can go on vacation, whatever. Dude, it's like I hear no. like you know these people on Instagram and stuff like I only work three hours a week, and I'm like, how? Because I'm working five hundred. Like yeah. I can't stop working. Like it'll be eleven, twelve o'clock at night, and I'm still working because I have to get this 
something done before something else. Like there's always something to do. Yeah. Well, casual PSA, if you're on Instagram, you're scrolling and someone's selling a thousand dollar course saying they only work four hours a day. Don't buy it Slides. because they're, they're, yeah, they're only working four hours a day because we're, we're out there buying these courses and then only to find out it's not true. Right. Um, but so the social media, this is my long winded segue, uh, is a big piece of the game. And we're talking like we're on it, you know, all the time. And it's so important. On one side, it's very positive because it allows startups, entrepreneurs uh, access to spaces yeah. we didn't have, you know, 20 years ago. Right. I'm sure even in your music career, that would have made a huge difference. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, we didn't have any of that. The exposure, you know, A&R, that's, I actually wanted to get into the music industry, like on the business side. Okay. Um, and it was funny how much it changed. But we didn't have social media, so it's great. And then on the flip side, the reason I started the cast is it's so much exposure for our young people. And there's so yeah. many smoke and mirrors. Um, how do you kind of plan to handle that with your young humans, with social media, phones? Yeah. It's hard because everybody's doing it. And I don't want them to be the outcast that doesn't know sure. what's going on, you know, with their peers. So... We just have an open conversation, I believe, in you know, just talking to them about everything. There's nothing off the table at our house. And um, so we just talk about it. And if I see them watching something or hear them talking about something, I'm like, well, let's talk about that. Like, yeah. do you think that that's true? Or how would that be possible? Or, you know, te trying to teach them to have um, a, a bit of discrimination between what is actually possible and what is not, you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff. And... Um, my daughter is actually, I'm really proud of her because she was on TikTok after a while of her being like, can I please, like all my friends, please, please, because I was really resistant because you hear all the statistics and all the, you know, it's scary. And so she was on it for a while and, you know, we were talking about it one night and I was like, hey, yeah, are you still on TikTok or whatever? And she's like, she's like, you know what, mom, I really didn't feel good about myself when I was watching these TikToks and so I decided to delete it. And I was like, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Hi, baby. No. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think it's just you know we just talk about it, and I, I explain the real world to them as as much as I can. I think the community. I don't have kids. I have dogs, but I think I've coached. I coached a high school varsity team for ten years. Yeah. And Fifteen years before that, so I saw how much you know my kiddos are sitting at their phone, and it's and they believe it. And I'm oh, like, yeah. no, no, I'm in marketing branding. I promise you, right. there's really good smoke and mirrors and yeah. filters and, um. Oh, man, but the filters? Forget I, about it. You look like a different human. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's up. But it's, it's literally fake. I think it's almost good for them to see how you can, like, the TikToks, there's before and afters. Yeah. Or, like, you see the tick, the countdown and then they change and you're like, it literally looks like a different it's human. It's a different person. So, yeah, you know that it's not real. Um, But I think the communication and the transparency is so critical in – Letting them figure it out. Again, not a parent. I don't like to advise our coach when you, know, you don't have those authentic ethos. But from the coaching perspective, I think there's nothing you can hide from them. Like they're going to they they're have gonna access. They're going to figure it out. Oh, to, for either through them or their friends yeah, or for sure. they're at parties and it's it's going to happen. I think the conversation is the same thing with drinking or drugs or dating or, oh, yeah. you know, it's all out there. Yeah, we talk about all that stuff. Sex, drugs, drinking. When you're at a party, what are you going to do if this yeah. happens? Like we go through scenarios and. Okay. Okay. And try to like, you know, we make it a game kind of, okay, like what happens if such and such? And then they'll be like, what if we did this? And I'm like, good idea. <laughs> so we kind of make it fun. Like it's not always like a lecture, but um, yeah, it's, it's a scary world for kids yeah. out there. Yeah. Well, and all things like coexist and turmeric and tequila people was like, what it's, a, what it's it about? I'm like, you know, it's work hard, play hard, balance. You can be all things. You wear all the hats. But really, bottom line, it's about mental health and understanding who you are and that all these juxtapositions in your life can exist. I'm an athlete. I like to have fun. I'm a business social person, but also I like to be alone and just be yeah, with my I dogs. Like all these things. So you can accept who you are and then find your alignment. I love in this that world. so much. Well, we're 42. We're figuring it out. Yeah. So. <laughs> Still, still getting there. <laughs> We're still getting there. Um, but I want our young people to live in this transparent space so they have this awareness themselves to be like, oh, I'm this and this, and I can yeah. do this, and, and nothing fits. I can be, you know, a local liquor brand and be a really in intentional parent. Like, yeah. these things coexist, and our world is so like, no, you have to be this. You know this. what's interesting about that? I feel like my whole life, people have been really confused about who I am. Because I am both things yep. so many times and I kind of contradict what people expect me to be. And so it is cool to be like at my age, I don't really care anymore. You know, I want to be liked, of course, and I mm -hmm. want, you know, people to think I'm cool or whatever. But like it's it's not my whole purpose in life anymore. And so it's nice to be able to feel comfortable 
and doing different things that I was like, you know what, that seems cool to me and I want to do that. Amen. It's Isn't that crazy though where we think we have to fit into these boxes? Yeah. Even if we're like conscious, intuitive humans, there's still some still unconsciousness yeah. that's like, wow, what, what is this? Like I, To this day, I feel like I'm explaining what I do, who I am, why I am the way I am all the time. Yeah. And I get it because as humans, we want to understand where it's like, if you see a good looking guy and they're still single, you're like, oh man, something must be wrong. Something's right. going on there. <laughs> and it's like, oh no, don't do that. Like, that's what I get. Like, but we just are so conditioned oh, yeah. to do that. So we're stopping that right now. We're here like no Love more. It. Try and constantly not do that. Love it. Um, but I, I want to unpack that a little more because I feel like we definitely crossed paths for a reason. Yeah. Um, what do you, how would you define yourself? Like, what are your major pillars of defining Ooh, your own world? That's a, quite a question. Um, like I said, I'm still trying to find myself yeah. after all these years. But um, I really care about people, I've come to find out. And, you know, it's like my worst nightmare to offend someone, which obviously happens because I'm a human. But um, I really care about people and I want to do the best for others. And I also like to have a good time. And I also um, want to not care sometimes. Yeah. You know, I want to have a break from caring so much. Sure. Because it's tiring sometimes. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's, I don't know. I don't know if I answered that question properly, but it's, it's complicated because every day I feel like a different person. Like some days I want to put on a bunch of makeup and look fancy and, mm. you know, get dressed up. And other days I want to be in sweats and I want that to be okay. Uh, and it is okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just want to feel like, yeah, this is me today. And I can come as a different person every single day if I feel like it. And, you know, my heart is always in the right place. And I'm always trying to do the best for others. But I also need to take care of myself sometimes. And I have to try to re remind myself that a lot because I, I'm the type that will just give, 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 give. And yeah. I need to, like, okay, you need to stop and, like, take care of yourself today. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, that's perfect. I think it 100% answers the question because um, it wasn't an intentional trick question, but like there are <laughs> like wait a minute, yeah, yeah, a you're trick. Like, Shit, what's the answer? Uh, no, there's there's no real answer, and sometimes there's no real pillar. Like I'm this and this, and that's literally what this is all about. Is that everyone like just do what you want to do? Because every person out there listening, every human being, we're all different people on different days. We're all yeah. like multiple personalities in some capacity because you're tired or you're stressed and life is really hard and there's a mm -hmm. lot coming at us, especially our young people. Um, so you have to like suit up and be in armor some days and other days you've got to just rejuvenate. Uh, but I do, I'm blessed to have all the people that come on Turmeric Tequila that really care about people and they really care about. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, making this world a better place, whether it's through, you know, social stuff and libations or, you know, being a doula and helping like this birth experience. And it's always mission driven humans that want to just leave a positive impact. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's ironic that you started out as a young human using your voice. But even now, like some of these wise words are going to go through. I have a feeling you're going to continue to use your voice just in probably a different oh, way that you thought. Thank you. Mm hmm. Oh, that makes me kind of want to cry a little bit. That hit me right now. Thank well, you. I would, appreciate that. Would you ever do like podcasting or anything like that? I did have a podcast for birth education for a little bit. Okay. Um, but then once we started the vodka company, I was like, I just can't because like, you know, it's a lot of work yeah. to do a podcast. And yeah. so that kind of fell to the wayside. And um, but yeah, I mean, I just want to help people. Okay. That's, I love it. That's what I like doing the most. Maybe even just through the brand. I'm giving you this. I don't, this is like off topic and unsolicited like <laughs> I'll consultation. I'll take any business advice. Yeah. You well, no, not me. business advice, but I think the more you, because you are a minority woman owned brand, I think the more you're sharing your experience, I always advise my clients like humanize the brand, the experience. Like I come from the world of like the Reeboks and the majors where everything is like dialed in and studied and yeah. manufactured. This day and age, our young humans are conscious consumers and people our age are conscious consumers. I'll buy right. a brand because it's woman owned or I'll buy a brand because it's local or whatever even more than like if i like the taste of it or i yeah. like you know it's cheaper the calories are better whatever i'll intentionally purchase and our young people are even better about that so i don't i could just see like you talking more about your experience even though it's your human experience but it's through the brand as cool. much as it seems like it doesn't fit that's where our world is yeah because i feel like what the why am i what am i doing you know like some <laughs> days i wake up and i'm like i don't know vodka company like what is happening 
<laughs> so yeah yeah but you're the person behind it just like you know attitude reflects leadership because i'm a long time athlete so you know your coach if the coach is like high energy and really strict da, 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 that's like the values of the team and like okay. that's how the team shows up to compete you know if you're an open book and you talk about your experience and da, 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 and it's like this is my brand this is what i believe it doesn't matter if it's a sports team a vodka a podcast yeah. i mean it's an extension of you that makes sense so and well, what i what i love most about owning Red Rocks Vodka is the the type of people that we get to meet are so diverse. Yeah. And the people who have like an affinity for Red Rocks or they've been to Red Rocks or they, you know, like visiting, hiking, going to shows, whatever they like to do at Red Rocks, the, the just the diversity of that is so cool to see. And I love the ability of this vodka to bring so many different people together. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. Well, community sounds like a running theme through yeah, it's your, really important your messaging. To, to us. Yeah. Do you guys do anything right now with your followers, your fans, or anything like that? Not yet. Okay. We just started in February, so we're really new. Okay. We're, right now, we're just trying to like get up and running and and get into locations. That's our main focus right now, and get the word out. Um, but we do a lot of like charity functions and things like that. And we help out in any way we can. We don't have like a lot of money to give people, but we have yeah. a lot of vodka to give people. There so. You go. Um, so we've been trying to be generous with that and, and help out any way we can. Well, I love, you know, culturally, like internationally food and drink is such like a traditionally known situation where you come together and you celebrate. Um, and it's about good drinks and this, it's not just like 50 drinks at, you know, downtown Denver. It's like really enjoy it, but like bringing people together. And Mm -hmm. that's, that's like a common denominator that almost every single culture across the world has Yeah, where you unite over food and drink. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, 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 it's an extraordinary opportunity to bring people together for a good excuse. Yeah. And it tastes good. And it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. And it's good. Yeah. yeah. Don't sleep on the fun out there. Everybody gets so wrapped up in the business. <laughs> you got to put on the sweats yeah, and take you gotta, it low key. Yeah, you got to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, so tell us, accessibility is a big thing um, for, you know, well, in life, but also um, for getting a brand out there. Tell me, like, where are you guys right now in Denver? Tell us about big partnerships. Where can we get Red Rocks? Vodka. Yeah, so if you go to our website, redrockspirits.com, you can click get some and we have our locations there. We're, right now we're in 111 locations in like the Denver metro area. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're running. And so uh, we're really excited about our growth. It's been um, a lot of work, but it's also been really rewarding just to see the reaction that we're getting from people. Um, so that's been really fun to see. And we're growing every day, so check back. Um, we have a newsletter you can join to get more information on new locations we're being added to. But we're at, you know, a few big ones. We are at Argonaut. We're at, at you know, a lot of big ones around town. But okay, big bars and restaurants. Um, we're at not as many bars and restaurants. They've been harder to get into. So if you go to a bar and restaurant, if you ask for Red Rocks vodka, that will really, really help us out because a lot of them say we won't order it until somebody asks for it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you go ask for it, that would really, really help us. Um, but, um, we're at like tap 14. We just, uh, picked up tap and burger. We just picked up the pig and the sprout. So we're, we're at some pretty cool places in Denver and, um, hoping to grow that aspect really, really soon. That's amazing. And are you guys at Red Rocks, the amphitheater? I wish. Come on. I know. We got to put pressure. We gotta Let's get go there. Red Rocks. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody knows someone that knows someone, I'm dead serious. Hit them oh, up man, and lean awesome. in. Yeah. They'll send you some samples. I'm telling you it's already good. And you know, I'm an aficionado. Um, <laughs> not just tequila, all the things. We're very good at the workout, but we're excellent at the fun. Awesome. Um, tell everybody a little bit about, because people don't understand how hard it is to get into these places. You've got distributors, you've got laws, like tell everyone like the 10,000 foot view of like how you even establish relationships or get product into bars, restaurants, liquor stores. I know it's complicated, but just like the 10,000 foot view, just because I want people to understand some of the process. Okay. (laughs) Hang on. Let me resituate in my chat. (laughs) (laughs) So there are, uh, we have a three tier system. And so there's like a manufacturer, a distributor, and then the retailer. So right now we are self-distributing. We are looking for distribution at the moment uh, because, um, you know, it's us driving to every place Mm -hmm. to give them what they order. And that takes a lot of our time. So um, in order, like we, I cannot go to the store or go like to anywhere and like sell you vodka. I have to go through the retailer in order to get the vodka to you. 
it's against the law for me to just sell it. So we need the stores, we need the restaurants, we need the bars in order to get it to the people. Mm-hmm. And um, there's lots of different laws of how we can and cannot do that. I, that's probably a really boring podcast. No, <laughs> well, actually, the no, laws. Because I think people, it's just, so we used to do parties in Denver and we could literally like partner with Sky Vodka. And yeah. like when the fruit labels or uh, flavors came out, this was like 15 years ago. I feel like so old. Anyways, we would literally just get a case from somebody we knew out here and we'd bring it into the bar and it was like, we'd do drinks. Also, not a big deal. And it wasn't that long ago. Now, no way oh, is it's that happening. so strict. And it was probably illegal back then too, but like, Yeah, what I mean, is? honestly, there's, there, we were noticing that there are, like, I love following the rules. I'm like a good goodie in that respect, but like there, we're noticing like okay, well there's a lot of leniency here, or you know okay. people are not exactly following the rules here, so there's still some of that. But oh, okay. But if you get caught, then you're in big trouble. Yeah, <laughs> like, well if you're like small, that. you can't. You don't. The law. Let's not play with that. Um, but how hard is it to get a distributor? Because this is kind of the chicken, the egg. You, it takes yeah. all your time to do this, but then you have to sell. I'm guessing a certain amount to be part of a distributor. I literally just said that yesterday. I was like, man, this whole business is like chicken and the egg. Yeah. Like it's just like you gotta have people asking for you. But in order to get people to ask you, you have to do like it's just always something else. Like on the you know the next thing that you have to do. But um, so to get a distributor, you have to have a decent following you have to have a decent amount of sales and and enough to make them want to sell you and then you have to be big enough for them to push you to the store like it's like a whole thing yeah yeah you it's kind of I mean like anything in life if you walk in with deep pockets even the product's not that good and you have the right relationships you're going to take to the next level for sure just like marketing branding you might not be the most quality human in the world but you're naked on Instagram you've got a million followers Mm -hmm. and you monetize at a certain angle you're gonna get yeah. attention and sponsors and there's a whole podcast there that doesn't last because people on instagram watching naked people aren't gonna buy your seven dollar smoothie like it's just not gonna happen <laughs> the basement creeper's not gonna spend but they'll sit there and lurk all day um so it kind of factors out but it's really hard in this day and age so i preach to anyone listening if you've got brands or influencers or people or content creators you like go out of the way buy their oh, stuff yeah. give just give them likes give them views do because it's such a game we've got to run yeah. from authentic space and yeah. honestly, like we're up against all of the other huge brands that have millions of dollars to spend on yeah. branding and marketing. And we're just like, me and my husband are like, hey, guys, like you want some vodka? <laughs> <laughs> so it's really hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really well, hard. Well, it's constant. But you guys have made some extraordinary traction. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate that. What, so what, So given the limited time, energy, resource, and just <laughs> brain power, what were, your, what were your marketing choices? Like what did you lean into? that you thought would be the best um, spaces for you guys to tackle? Uh, well, we we leaned into social media. We're working on that. Um, most of our sales happen in person. So we do a lot of tastings. We try okay. to get to any event we can get into. Um, just having people talk to us, getting to taste it, getting to try it, um, just really focusing on that. We're you know, starting, uh, we're going to start doing radio ads. Okay. So that's really big down the pipeline for us. Like that was a huge leap for us to do that. Um, so yeah, we're just, honestly, I want to be everywhere. We do do a lot of window perfs on like liquor stores and stuff. So the, you know, the big stickers that you see outside the, the liquor stores, we have about 30 of those around town. Um, so yeah, we're just, I, I just want to be everywhere. I love it. I love it so much. Again, using the voice just in a totally different way than you planned. It's so funny. I love funny. that. Thank you. <laughs> um, tell us now about the product, gluten-free, non-GMO. Like, brag about how awesome this situation okay. is. So, yeah, we are gluten-free. I'm actually celiac, so that's really important to me. I, okay. I, I don't have gluten in any part of my life, so I need to be able to drink what I'm creating. Um, we're made from corn, non-GMO. We are six times distilled, carbon filtered, so we're really clean. We have a really neutral flavor with a hint of sweetness, mm-hmm. which I really like. Because I'm not really a cocktail person. And if I am going to make a cocktail, it's got to be really simple. Like, I don't want to be making foams and syrups and stuff like that. Like, I want to be like, okay, put this in there, put that in there, and then I'm going to drink it. Um, but I actually like drinking spirits on the rocks is my favorite way to drink them. So they okay. got to taste good for me to want to drink it. And uh, I think ours is really good. 
It is. So we, the, we I tasted it at the festival, and so it's, yeah. like, warm and in a plastic cup. Like, whatever. <laughs> um, and I, I'm I'm not an aficionado in, in liquor in, in general. Probably not even tequila, because some people are deep in it. But I know what I like and what I yeah. don't. And it was warm, like I said, plastic cup, and it was not bad. I, I mean, it was really good, but given all the things, like, I'm like, this is actually, like, okay. And then yeah. it is. It's smooth, but it does have, like, a little hint of sweet yeah which was like a really nice like aftertaste Mm -hmm. um so i was really impressed thank you i can only imagine like if you actually have like ice or a nice glass or like the whole thing is set up like how you're supposed to experience it it's pretty good it's awesome um do you think the festivals are are good because i feel like you cross like a lot of people you get in a lot of hands face-to-face stuff yeah you guys like doing them yeah we we like doing it um we like meeting everybody we like seeing the reaction because that's how we learn and grow too so Mm -hmm. if people aren't liking something we want to hear about that because we want to make it the best product we possibly can and we want to make it as affordable as we can that's our goal so um hearing what people have to say about what we're doing and you know how we're pricing things, where we're at, where they go to, to drink. That's really important for us to hear. And so the festivals are a really great opportunity for us to just meet a ton of people at yeah. one time. Yeah. I was I was starting to ask Willis questions. I'm like, wait, you're Red Rocks this? And he's like, yeah. And he's like multitasking. And I'm like, of yeah. course, going into like podcast mode. And it's like, girl, keep it moving. Like we got a whole <laughs> line here. Um, but I was, I was fascinated right away. And like I said, the flavor, I'm like, oh my God, this is like warm vodka. And like, we're here for this. Yeah. It's so funny because most people will taste it because – Sometimes, you know, vodka gets a bad rap sometimes. Like, you maybe drank a ton of it in high school or college or whatever. And, <laughs> yeah. like, you just, like, drink not great vodka and you just have bad memories. But so we kind of sometimes have to be like, just try it. Come yeah. on and just try it. And they'll take a drink and they're like, this is actually good. Yeah. Like, we get that a lot. Actually, it's good. <laughs> yeah. I know. So I say it. I'm like, no, not say it's bad. But, like, you just think, like, even warm to Whatever yeah. you drink in, like, uh, you know, a warm in a plastic cup, it's kind of right. like – You'll know a little bit, but I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. This is pretty good. I think tequila has a worse rap, like, for high school age. Yeah, if you're that maybe it does. Gangster, but like, oh, no, I can't even smell tequila. I'm like, when did you drink it? I'm like, well, back in 94. Right, exactly. I, I was in exactly, whatever. Exactly, yeah. So I think they have a worse rap for what it is. But, um, no, I think it's actually, like, really good. Do you guys Thank have you. a tasting room or anything where you can go and – We don't. Okay. No, but on our website, redrockspirits.com again, um, you can hit on events, and we have all of our tastings listed um, where you can go and, and try it and taste it. That's so awesome. Are you guys doing, do you have any upcoming events you want to share? We can find you guys at hmm. festivals or every weekend we have a tasting somewhere. Oh, we're, okay. We're doing some, something somewhere. Um, is usually it usually at, at restaurants? Uh, we just did a restaurant tasting last night. Um, but usually it's at liquor stores around town. Okay. And, um, we have, I don't even know if it's open to the public though. So maybe I won't say, I don't okay. know. Stay tuned. Yeah. Okay. Um, Stay tuned. Well, I, do you guys post the calendar on the site or anything? Yep. Yeah, okay. it's on the website. Okay. Their social media is really good. So if you're, you, you do a great job. Thank well, you so much. You're on it a ton. And you're yeah. like, if I post something, you're reposting it. So I really appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I know how hard it is. So if anybody like needs, <laughs> like, if I'm like, okay, this is cool. Like, I'll just repost it because... Like, I know, like, I'm I'm in there with you, like, working hard there you go. <laughs> to yes. make this happen. So, yeah. Well, a message to the companies, everybody gets so stringent on their social media of, like, it's got to be super clean and brand aligned and the colors have to fit and this and that. I, again, I'm going to go rogue out here. No, just be be authentic. Let it be out there. If someone's Honestly, saying yeah. something and there's a few companies that they talk about or whatever, just put it out there. Like, let it be seen that people are engaged with your brand, that it's real and – um you know, they're out here hustling. Like, I, I, I think people overthink the social media thing. I do, too. I, yeah. I used to until I realized, like, I would spend, you know, hours on this really awesome reel. And I'm like, oh, man, this is this is the one that's going to go viral. Yeah. This is it. And it gets, like, a few likes. And I'm like, what the heck? And then <laughs> yeah. one that I just kind of threw up there, yep. like, everybody loves. And I'm like, I don't know. So yeah. I'm just going to be me and put it up and, you know, see what happens. And that's all I can do. There you go. Well, perfect kind of circular event. I always say to my companies, I'm like, I think our young people are going to get over this overexposure. I think all of it's going to become like taboo. And just like your daughter being like, "Mm, no, thank you. Like, they're so much wiser. Well, I I do too. So if you're out there, get your brand, your in in real life, word of mouth humans, like to actually be brand ambassadors. Because if that goes away, when it does, I'm predicting it, you'll have your people, like your real community reverberating yeah. the love for your for your cause. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. 
So give it to him one more time. Where do we find you? Any social media tags? Anything else you want to share? Yeah, so our website is redrockspirits.com. And we are at Red Rock Spirits on social. Love it. I can't believe you guys got that. That wasn't taken. I know. Everything's taken. I know. I thought we'd have to be like Red Rock Spirits, four, five, six. Or- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously, the worst. Um, last question I ask everyone that comes on, because I know the hustle's real and we're out here doing many things, but we're old enough to know it's not all about the dollar. What is success to you? Ooh, success to me is... Being able to put food on the table, because I have three kids, so that's that's a big concern for me. Um, but also being able to enjoy my family, enjoy my life, and really feel like I can rest in um, my love and care for them. I love that's it. That's success for me, I think. Amen. Is there, besides you going to the bar and requesting um, Red Rocks Vodka, is there anything else the community at large can do in t- like intentionally and specifically to support you guys? Just spreading the word. That's kind of the stage you're in. Like if you could post a picture for us, if you buy it, happen to you know see it somewhere, post a picture, that would really help out a lot. Like just anything we can do to get the word out right now will really, really help us. And it's like, you know, when you're dealing with such a small company, like it will directly help me and my family. You know, yeah. it's like so that's kind of cool. Like if you if you're wanting to help, that's that's just the best way just to spread the word for us. There you go. Shop local. Shop woman owned. Yeah. Colorado. Let's show up for our family out here. Um, Ashley, we're wishing you luck. We're going to be fans. So I'm excited to do some stuff with you guys down the road. Yeah, me too. That'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah. We're getting the Colorado community together on a couple levels. Cool. Um, but I appreciate you guys coming out and I wish you luck. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This was awesome. My pleasure. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.